In this video, we will be talking about ventilation and how to read the results of a spirometer to prepare you for your respiratory lab. A spirometer is an instrument used by doctors to measure the air entering and exiting a person's lungs. The one we use in lab is a white tube-like structure. The person whose air capacity is being measured puts her mouth on one end and breathes into it while the computer creates waves on the screen depicting the inhalation and exhalation of the breathing. So here we have the computer and then the results will show waves going up and down the peaks are showing the inhalation and then the dips are showing the exhalation. And here's a picture of the spirometer that you will be using in your labs. Let's now go through the different lung volumes and capacities to help you understand what you are looking at as you use the spirometer. The waves I am drawing now represent normal breathing. The peak of the wave is the volume of air entering the body at the end of normal inspiration and the bottom of the wave represents the volume of air leaving the body at the end of normal expiration. However, our lungs have a greater capacity than is shown in normal breathing. The expiratory reserve volume is the volume of air that can leave the body during forced expiration. And the inspiratory reserve volume is the volume of air that can enter the body during forced deep breathing. The volume which includes the normal breathing volume called the tidal volume and the inspiratory reserve volume is called the inspiratory capacity. The vital capacity is the maximum amount of air someone can exhale after taking the deepest possible breath they could. Functional residual capacity is the volume of air present in the lungs after passive expiration. This line represents the total capacity of the lungs, and lastly the residual volume is the air left in the lungs after exhalation. So there are four different lung volumes. First the residual volume, then the expiratory reserve volume, then the tidal volume, which I'll write on here because I didn't earlier, and then also the re inspiratory reserve volume. Capacities are the sum of two or more of these volumes, so we'll go through each of the capacities. The vital capacity is the sum of the inspiratory reserve volume, the expiratory reserve volume, and the tidal volume. The total lung capacity is the vital capacity plus the residual volume. The inspiratory capacity is the sum of the tidal volume and the inspiratory reserve volume. And finally, the functional residual capacity is the expiratory reserve volume plus the residual volume. When calculating a person's ventilation, it is important to understand that there are two types of calculations. One, there is total pulmonary ventilation, which is the ventilation rate times the tidal volume. And two, there is the total alveolar ventilation, which is the ventilation rate multiplied by the tidal volume minus the dead space. Dead space refers to places where the air remains in conducting pathways like the trachea and bronchi, but are not exchanging gases with the blood. The total alveolar ventilation is a more accurate description of how much fresh air is actually reaching the alveoli. Let's talk through one respiratory cycle in an adult to help you understand the concept of dead space and how it affects fresh air reaching the alveoli. In a typical breath moving 500 milliliters of air, at the end of inspiration the alveoli will be filled and there will be about 150 milliliters of fresh air sitting in the dead space or conducting pathways. That 150 milliliters of fresh air in the dead space will be exhaled first, followed by 350 milliliters of stale air from the alveoli. Another 150 milli milliliters of stale air from the alveoli will then be sitting in the dead space at the end of expiration. While inhaling, 500 milliliters of fresh air will enter the body. The 150 milliliters of stale air from the dead space will enter the alveoli first, followed by 350 milliliters of fresh air. The rest of the fresh air will fill the dead space. Then we are back to where we started and the cycle continues. I wrote down some notes here to explain the diagram for your reference and that concludes this video.